Welcome to how to program and operate the ICOM ID-888H amateur radio transceiver. This is a tutorial for new hams. Hams with a new to them radio. Hams with an ICOM radio. Or anyone interested in amateur radio. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7, PPX in Boise, Idaho, calling QST. After resetting the ID-888H with an all reset, I recommend three preference settings be configured immediately after performing a reset. These settings are not essential, but I've found them helpful, and it's a good way for beginners to get accustomed to using the settings menu screen. I'll not be explaining the different settings in detail. That will come later. Here are the three, th three settings that I recommend immediately following an all reset. My call sign, RF attenuator, and the scan, pause, and resume timers. First, my call sign. This setting is required in order to use the D-Star digital feature of the ID 888H. D-Star registration requires each user to program their assigned call sign into their radio. Your own personal call sign is referred to in the world of D-Star digital communications as my call sign. So here's how I set my call sign to KJ7 PPX, Kilo Juliet 7 Papa Papa X-Ray. First, tap menu, rotate the dial to call S, and tap, tap Moni. Rotate the dial to my, tap Moni. Tap low, and rotate the dial to select the first character of your call sign. For me, that's Kilo. Tap low to advance to the next space. Dial for the next character. For me, that's Juliet. Seven. If you make a mistake and need to go back, you can press the back arrow with by pressing the CS. Papa. another papa and x-ray when finished tap money and tap menu to exit next the RF attenuator function the default configuration for the RF attenuator function is on however Setting it off provides a wider noise filter for squelch control. Here's how to set the RF attenuator function off. Tap menu, rotate the dial to set, tap money. Rotate the dial to function, it's already there, tap money. Rotate the dial to AT ATT, tap money. Dial to off, tap money and tap menu to exit. The final settings that I recommend changing immediately following an all reset are the scan pause and resume timers. I prefer the scan operation to pause for 20 seconds when it detects a signal. This allows me plenty of time to listen to the signal and decide to cancel the scan and continue listening. Otherwise the scan will resume after 20 seconds even if that frequency still has traffic. If the scan detects a signal that's very brief, less than 5 seconds, I prefer the scan to resume scanning after that 5 seconds without having to wait for 20 seconds of empty air. So first let's set the scan pause timer. Tap menu, rotate the dial to scan, Tap money. Rotate the dial to pause. Tap money. The default timer is set to 10 seconds. Dial to 20. And tap money. Next, we'll set the scan resume timer. Dial to resume. Tap money. The default timer is set to 2 seconds. Dial that to 5. Tap money. Tap menu to exit. Now let's take a closer look at the front panel of the ID-888H. 
The front panel features a tuning dial, power switch, volume control, squelch control, microphone connection, and nine control panels. Here's an overview of these front panel controls. First, button number one. Tap menu to enter the settings menu. Rotate the dial to view the main menu items. Tap menu again to exit the settings menu. Long press the menu to lock the front panel controls. The display indicates a locked key symbol. With the controls locked, only the volume, squelch, and money buttons are enabled. Rotate squelch counterclockwise fully to open the squelch filter. Rotate the volume clockwise to increase the volume. Rotate squelch clockwise just until the noise is filtered out. Tap Mani to fully open the squelch filter without having to readjust the squelch knob. Tap Mani to re-enable the squelch filter. The dial and all other buttons are locked. Long press menu again to unlock the front panel controls. Next, button number two, memory write. The memory write button enables frequencies to be assigned to a specific channel number. The button has two functions. S.MW is the select memory write mode and the MW is to confirm the memory write assign the channel. Tapping the button selects memory write mode. Long pressing the button assigns the frequency to a channel number. Continuing to press memory write after the two quick beeps will cause the display to beep once more and the channel number will automatically advance to the next channel. This is helpful when programming several channels at once. For example, Here's how to program three successive frequency channel assignments. Let's rotate the dial in VFO mode to 146.520. Tap Memory Write to select Memory Write Mode. Let's rotate the dial to select an unassigned channel number. Channel 2 has no assignment yet. Press and hold memory right for three beeps. The display automatically advances the channel number. I'm going to change my volume just a bit. Next, we'll rotate the dial to 146.540. Tap memory right. The display indicates that channel unassigned, so press and hold for three beeps. The display automatically advances the channel number. Finally, rotate the dial to 146.560. Tap memory write to enter memory write mode. The channel, the, this channel is unassigned currently. Press and hold memory right for three beeps. The display automatically advances the channel number. Let's verify. Tap memory call to switch to channel mode. Rotate the dial to, to ensure that each new frequency has been assigned a channel. There's channel four, three, Two. Tap VFO to return to VFO mode. So what if you mistakenly tune the radio to the wrong frequency? Can that frequency assignment be changed? Here's how to edit the assigned frequency. First let's copy the channel assignment from channel mode to VFO mode. 
tap memory call to enter channel mode. We'll rotate the dial to the desired channel. Let's say that channel 4 had our mistake. Now, long press memory write to copy that channel's frequency to VFO mode. The display switches to VFO mode, showing no MR. Now let's correct the mistaken frequency. Let's say channel 4 should have been assigned to 146.570. So we've changed the frequency. Tap memory write to select memory write mode. The display indicates flashing MR. And the previously accessed frequency, long press memory write to confirm the new assignment for channel 4. The display now indicates the correct frequency. Let's check to see if that assignment did show up correctly in channel mode. Tap memory call to return to channel mode. The display indicates the correct frequency and channel assignment for channel 4. Good work. We performed an all reset, programmed a call sign for the my call sign setting, set the RF attenuator function off, set scan pause and resume timers, and looked at the menu button and the memory write button front panel control. The next episode will begin by looking at the next front panel control button, the dial. This has been How to Program and Operate the ICOM ID-880H Amateur Radio Transceiver. Thank you for watching, for liking, and for subscribing to my channel at youtube.com Milt Reynolds. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7PPX in Boise, Idaho, and I'll be clear on your final 73.